Hey, this is Pastor Nate Jackson with On Mission Living, sharing with you another episode of Next Steps, where we work through God's Word in context, right? A little bit every day for the strength and the encouragement we need to live our lives on mission for Christ and take our next step in His direction. Amen. Hey, listen, I trust you have signed up for Next Steps Bible Devos already. I trust you're getting them in your email inbox already five days a week, as promised. Uh, but if you're still kicking the tire, if you haven't already signed up and you're just test driving this, listen, uh, just so you know, they are free. Uh, to give it a test drive, it's real simple, right? Just uh, just go to our main On Mission Living website. Uh, it's onmissionliving.com. And right down there, as you first open it up, there'll be a blue button right in the middle of the page. It'll say next step. Just click that, sign up for free, and we will the next day, you'll begin to get yours uh, in your email inbox. So again, it's real simple. Before we jump in for this one, just remember, if you are blessed by this, if you're encouraged by this in any way, please share this video. Because uh, if it's an encouragement to you, it will probably be an encouragement to somebody else. And we would love to share that. So please share the video. If you haven't already, go to our YouTube channel, On Mission Living. And if you would, click the subscribe button and the little notification bell off to the side. That way, every time we post new and fresh content, you won't miss it, right? You will know when we do. Hey, listen, if you're working with us through the book of 1 Peter, uh, and if you're with us on the Next Steps journey, that's exactly where we're at, right? We're in 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, listen, last time we were together, we got through verse 9. So we're going to pick it up in verse 10, right? Verse 10, 1 Peter 1, verse 10. It goes like this. It says, this salvation was something that even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. Man, every word of this matters. I hope you're listening. They wondered, he said, what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. Right? Verse 12, he says, then they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. Right? But for you. Talking to first century believers, post post-crucifixion, post-resurrection, Holy Spirit-filled New Testament believers. He says they were told, the Old Testament prophets were told it wasn't for them. They were told to say it that was coming, but it wasn't for them to see. It was for you, Peter says. And now, picking up in verse 12, now this good news, the gospel, amen, this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Whew. This is good stuff. It is all so wonderful. Listen, that even the angels in heaven are eagerly watching these things happen. <laughs> Friend, we're going to try to hurry on this, but this is so powerful, right? This is so great. This is Peter, listen, bringing, bringing our salvation. He's talking to first century believers for sure that are going through tough times. I'm telling you, he's talking to us, amen? He's in context, he's talking to first century believers, but I promise you, as it was being recorded, the Holy Spirit knew in 2020, we would be going through this scripture because we need it, amen? And Peter's bringing our salvation into view. How do you make it through tough times? It's taking your focus off the chaos, not, not having your head buried in the sand. This is not about ostrich living, right? This is, this is new life living. This is redeemed living. Is living, listen, with the awareness of this glorious, gracious salvation that you now have in Jesus Christ. And it trumps everything else in your life. It rules everything else in your life. It infuses supernatural power into everything else in your life, right? And Peter's trying to express that in written form. And he says, this salvation, I need you to know, he's saying, right? Don't miss this, right? You're trying to figure out how to, how to muster up the courage through all these times of tough around you. Listen, he's saying the salvation you have now in Jesus Christ, he says, is something even the Old Testament prophets wanted to know more about. They were fascinated. Listen, Isaiah didn't know. Daniel didn't know, right? Jeremiah didn't know. Even Moses didn't know. They, Abraham didn't know. They knew just what God gave them, and it was enough for their faith to be rich in their heart. But the Bible says, Peter says, they wanted to know more about and understand this amazing salvation that was going to come through the Lamb of God, suffering with a glorious ending. They wanted to know more about it. They were telling about it. They were writing about it. It was preserved for them and for us. It is, the, it is in the book, amen, like no other. It's there. But they wanted to know more about it. They would have given anything to have seen Jesus, right, to, to have heard about Jesus, like with the detail that we now have in front of us, amen. They would have given anything. They were even told that it wasn't even for them. It was, the salvation was for them, but listen, this glorious experience to do it, to see and know about the resurrection, to experience that and to experience the cross and the payment for our sin, they wanted to know more about that and it wasn't for them. Amen. It, the salvation was for them, but to understand it wasn't. That was, and Peter writes to first century believers that had seen it and knew it, and he said it was for you. He's saying, listen, you are spoiled, believer. You have something glorious 
handed to you that you now not just have to take by faith. In those, that case, they had seen it, right? They had seen the resurrection. They would seen the crucifixion, and they were experiencing it with the Holy Spirit in their heart now. And I would tell you, listen, we're 2020. We may not have seen the crucifixion, but we've seen the crucifixion. Amen. We may not have seen the empty tomb, but we know, we know what they did not know in the early days of the prophecies, right, in the Old Testament. So Peter says, listen, it's a gracious salvation that is prepared, man, it's prepared for us, amen? And he says they wanted to know about it. Then he goes on, he says, listen, they were told messages weren't for them, they were for you, meaning for them and for us. And then he goes on, he says, this glorious gospel, this good news was announced, listen, and preached by those who were spirit-filled. Preached in the New Testament by the power of the Holy Spirit coming right out of the upper room, amen? That's what Peter's referencing. And he's saying, listen, this is being, the Holy Spirit is infusing Bible teachers and preachers all over the world, now infused by the Holy Spirit, passed on with the, with the word of God. We don't have to trust that I know something. You just have to trust that I'm hearing from God and sharing it when he tells me to, amen? Listen, Peter's saying it's now being shared and it's so wonderful, he says. It's so wonderful. Listen, don't miss this last line. It's so wonderful that even the angels in heaven are eagerly watching, eagerly watching these things happen. Listen, we just came out of Resurrection Sunday, amen? I would just tell you that, listen, the, the Bible, the, the gospel accounts about the resurrection, the angels being there when they came to try to see and verify that is Jesus really gone? Their response is, what are you even doing looking for the, for the living among the dead? He told you. He told you what was going to happen. Where did you expect him to be? Of course he's resurrected. You know who was absolutely sure every moment of that season that he was coming out of that tomb? Every angel in heaven. Because they knew him and they knew they did. Listen, here's what they didn't know. They never experienced salvation like you and I, friend. Never. Right? They are created beings, but they have not been issued salvation. They are just there to do the bidding of the Lord. Listen, ours is by faith. That's where the glory is for the Lord, right? We choose. He calls, we answer. Amen? This, these angels knew. And it says they eagerly are watching these things happen. Listen, they, as they're watching this glorious salvation unfold, Right from, from the beginning to the end, from the Garden of Eden when it was promised it was going to happen to Jesus going, can you imagine how difficult that was for the angels to go? You could shut it all down right now. Why would you go through this pain? For them, they're not even grateful. Just shut it down, right? I don't know if that conversation ever happened, but if it was me, that's what I'd be thinking. Listen, they are, they are eagerly watching this whole story unfold. You know who is absolutely sure they know he's coming again to finish it all? Every angel in heaven. They're already rejoicing in advance. They, they don't know the time, but they know it's coming. You know who should be just as sure? The very people they're the most amazed with, which are those of us who don't deserve salvation and don't deserve the grace, but have just had it lavishly poured out on us. And Peter's saying, listen, if you keep your, keep your heart and mind right there, listen, you can go through anything because you know the game is already won. Amen? The game is already won. Whew, it's been prepared for us. It's been preserved for us. Wow, listen, just a wonderful, wonderful hope we have in Jesus Christ, right? This is not, listen, this is not coffee cup Christianity. I need you to hear me. We're going to close right now, but I need you to hear that. This is not coffee cup Christianity, right? This, you've not been given a, I don't have to suffer anymore because I've accepted the Lord. Listen, God didn't spare his son. He's not sparing us sons and daughters. But ultimately, ultimately he's coming back for us. He's preparing a place for us. And if it wasn't true, he'd have said so. He'd have said differently, amen? He's coming and he's coming soon. And that is, if we can stop looking at, focusing on our hearts and our minds and our attention and our affections on all these things that the world tries to keep us cluttered up with and chasing, and we'll just take the next step toward the Lord with an assurity in our heart, a surety in our heart that he's almost back. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. This has been a glorious salvation. The Old Testament prophets didn't really get it. They just had to do it by faith. Listen, the people Peter is writing to and all the way up into 2020 right here, right now with us talking about it. We know what they didn't know, amen? And we've experienced and know personally with the, with the experience and the knowledge of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. Listen, even the angels will never experience themselves. They are just standing back watching in awe of this glorious God pour out this glorious grace for people like you and I. And we will reign with Christ for eternity. That's what the Bible says, amen? Listen, I hope you've been encouraged. I'm encouraged just trying to share, share it with you. I pray it's been an encouragement and a stirring to your heart. Man, take your next step toward the Lord today, amen? Take your next step toward the Lord. Take it firmly, right? Don't look back. Hey, till our very next, next steps, remember, as always, on mission living is not for the elite, it's not for the few, it's for you. Lord bless you.